I'm here to address our dear state on the recent happenings in River State. The Natural Rescue Movement in River State finds it sudden to wake up to the news of another wasteful squandering of the collective resources of River State by Governor Yeso Wiki for the purposes of solving non-River State related issues. The latest on the list of this reckless show of charity to outsiders with River's money by the Governor missed prevailing suffering and hardship plunging citizens of the state due to ravaging flood in our communities and the country's economic downturn is the donation of 25 buses to Benue State People's Democratic Party campaign team. Other recent donations made by the governor include 300 million to the Committee of Wives of Lagos State Officials in October 18, 2022. And hours later, another donation of 20 million support to a library built by his political ally, Governor Opeze Ebazo, in honor of his late father in Abia State. On October 12, 2022, the governor donated 25 buses to the Cross River State PDP Campaign Council when he played host to the Cross River State People's Democratic Party and candidates of state and national assembly elections. On September 29, 2022, during the inauguration of Body of Benchers Complex in Abuja by President Mohamed Bari, Chairman of the Body of Benchers, Wale Olempeku San, disclosed that Governor Wicke donated $500 million to the construction of the complex. He had also donated over $1 billion naira to Pamo University, a private institution owned by a former governor of the state, Sir Dr. Peter Odele, all for purposes of political patronage. This is to mention just a few amongst other donations. The worker frittering away of taxpayers' money and our collective patrimony to other states by Governor Wicke is really appalling. It is Inconceivable, barbaric, and unacceptable, as charity they say begins at home. Ironically, just last week, 8,000 students of the state owned tertiary institution, River State University, were subjected to public ridicule, embarrassment, and mental torture when they were deprived the opportunity to write their final year exams due to their inability to meet up with school fees. As extravagant as the government of the day could be in sharing funds with other states. It's very inhumane for the same government to look the other way and allow our children to suffer such academic humiliation. What more evidence do reverse people need to vote out the PDP in the next general election? This clearly demonstrates that the current PDP-led reverse state government is more interested in attaining political relevance while the priority of the welfare of rivers people comes second on their scale of preference. This is unacceptable and highly condemnable because rivers money is supposed to be meant for the development of the state and its people first before extending a helping hand to others if need be. More sudden is the seeming silence or negligence on the part of the elites in the state, especially those in the governorship race, who have either refused to speak up against this recklessness because they are sponsored to cause destruction, not really because they are genuine in the governorship race. Furthermore, some projects embarked upon by the state government, for instance, the MOA campus of River State University, which was inaugurated recently, leaves one in awe of how such an all-important project meant for building our future generations will be handled so poorly despite the whooping three billion naira allotted for the project. Just a few buildings were erected at the site, while buildings originally erected by previous administration of Rotimi, of Rotimi Amechi were clearly left abandoned, thus defacing even the few buildings they managed to erect. Also, the project few months after its inauguration is not yet conducive for human habitable purposes or academic activities. Another clear example is the ongoing project at the site of former UPTH at the old Potako Township. The wicked-led government 
carefully left out the buildings at the site previously erected by the former administration and went ahead to construct new ones, of which the old buildings clearly defaced the new ones erected. This style of politicking with the growth and development of the state is unacceptable and alien to what a 21st century leadership style ought to be, as governments, they say, is a continuum. Also, the slow pace of construction of the trans Road is another indicator that the state government is not genuinely committed to developing all parts of the state to compete favorably economically. We therefore call on the River State Governor, Yef Subike, to retrace his steps and hold fought with further wastage of the collective patrimony of rivers people. As the saying goes, whatever has a beginning has an end. We therefore call on all citizens of the state to be hopeful as the end to this level of insanity. Insensitivity to their plight will soon come to an end in a few months. Finally, I wish to congratulate all those that we are fortunate to be chosen as the beneficiaries of the Governor Wicke's list of 100,000 special assistance on political unit affairs. Is it 200,000? As river citizens, it is your right to benefit from the commonwealth of the state. So without hesitation, feel free to enjoy all the benefits that come with the new appointment. Having been living in deprivation for the past 70 years, however, be wary of the caveat of the appointment, as it is an open secret that your PVCs, which is your right to exercise your franchise at the polls, we are taken from you alongside your bank details. Note that this is a deliberate attempt to use you as a foot soldier to install a stooge of the governor in the next political dispensation in order to continue the status quo or the allotting spree of non-accountable and anti-people style of leadership. Such a stooge will only owe his loyalty to his benefactor and not to the people of the state. And history will not judge you rightly if you are part of those to perpetrate such wickedness against reverse people. Trust, I urge all citizens of the state to use their votes wisely to vote in a government that will be compassionate to meeting the needs of the people of the state.